So now it's time to pray for an offering. If you're a visitor, don't feel any pressure to give. This is for members, you know, uh, giving us an opportunity to give the offering. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, your love for us is so great. You first gave to us. You gave to us your love. You gave to us your son. You gave us life, a mind, a soul. And you gave us the gift of language. Thank you so much. Please help us to be willing to give back to you just a little bit, a little portion. Please help us to be willing to give. You have blessed us with money. I pray that you would bless this offering, that the gospel may continue to go out, that many all around might be saved. Folks here and far as well. For the deaf and the hearing, please. Please, I pray that you would bless this church meeting here. Please um, help us to pay attention and focus, attend to you. I pray that you would help me to preach and teach clearly. Pray that you would work in all of our hearts in a, in a powerful way. Help us to be ready to repent, to change. If there are any who are not yet saved, those who are here or those who are watching, I pray that you would work in their hearts and help them to become saved today. Don't put it off. Pray that you'd bless the church meeting uh, over with Pastor Chapel, the Korean ministry meeting downstairs, the Chinese ministry meeting next door, the Spanish ministry meeting down the way. Lord, I pray you bless these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So today, uh, you know, Christian, be sober, be vigilant. It's con you know, and, and continuing to focus on the war. You know, the war uh, between <coughs> Russia and Ukraine is continuing. We don't know when the end of it's going to be. But for you and for me, for Christians, for people, we experience war every day, all day. And maybe it doesn't involve guns, but, but the war's inside in your heart and in your mind. Satan, he's tricky. And he wants us to walk around Completely ignorant. Yesterday, two days ago, me and my wife, we were able to go to uh, training to learn about some things uh, involving firearms and home protection, defense, and so forth. And they used this color system for, you know, this mindset. Now, some people are in the white zone. You know, they're just walking around, they're focused on their phone, walking down the street, and, you know, they're not, they're oblivious to what's going on around them. They're just completely unaware. I mean, somebody could just walk up and just blow them away, and they would never see it coming. Because they're just, they're not even focused, they're not attending. You know, or, you know, they <laughs> walking along with their cell phone, they, you know, fall into the, you know, street or something. And some of us, we understand this, you know, but, but we, we understand that there's a battle going on. There's a war. You know, there's problems within the family. That's a war. That's a battle. Got issues at work. That's, that's part of this battle, part of this war. What does this mean? Your family problems. Why are you having family problems? Well, because of sin. Maybe some rebellion or some pride or, you know, disputings, arguing. That's a war. It's a spiritual battle. At work, what are the problems at work there? You know, uh, somebody's breaking the rules or they're not showing up to work or, you know, problems. Why? Because of sin. This is a war. You're boss, what, what is he deciding to do? 
I mean, it's not his fault that this guy's missing all the time, but he needs to do right. If he doesn't do right, if he's just not addressing the issue, that's not right either. That also is a sin, and that will influence those around him. Maybe he's afraid. Maybe he doesn't want to punish. Maybe he's afraid the guy's going to get mad at him. He doesn't know what to do. It doesn't matter. This is a spiritual war, spiritual battle. Um, maybe um, the husband, the preacher, the teacher, whatever, feels, you know, tempted to look at bad things on the computer, bad pictures or, of, of, you know, naked people or whatever. I mean, that is a real, that is a real war going on, a real battle. And it happens every day, all day. So, I uh, find this verse, First Peter, chapter 5, verse 8. So we're going to read this together. So first of all, who who wrote this? Who penned this? See the name there? If you said Peter, yeah. Who's Peter? Peter's a disciple. Peter, that Peter. All right. It says, be sober. What, what does sober mean here in this verse? What does it mean? It means serious. It means also like in control, not, not all wild, not all emotional, but just settled. You know, in dealing with, yes, there's problems in dealing with situations. There they are, you know, not like, you know, when a problem comes up and, you, you know, you're just like, oh, no, I can't believe this is happening again. What's going on? My, my day's all messed up. You know, these are small things, and they blow their top. No. We need to be sober. So sometimes we use this word for not drunk, okay? But the point is, it, it's the same kind of a concept. You know, like when you're drunk, all your self-control is gone, Right? So first, be sober, you know, serious, settled, in control. Secondly, be vigilant. What does that mean, vigilant? Be aware, paying at pay attention, not just, you know, walking around oblivious to whatever's going on around you, completely ignorant, 
unaware of dangers, right? No. Observant. Noticing things. Seeing things. Potential problems or problems that are in existence. Noticing there may be danger. You know, the, the woman yelling against her kid, the guy standing over there, noticing things, being aware, you know, seeing it. Not, you know, only focused only on yourself, only in your own bubble, but looking around. Why? Why? Well, I thought we were supposed to be joyful and peace and love and, yeah, but always sober and vigilant because so now God's going to explain the reason because your adversary okay here's another word adversary what does that mean What's it mean? Adversary. Adverse. No, it's not counselor. It's your enemy. Your enemy. Because your enemy, your adversary, Adversaries, enemy. You have many enemies. Myself, yes. Satan, yes. His demons, yes. Many enemies. We have many enemies. We need to understand this, and we need to accept this. Satan will use Satan and his demons will use many people and many things to be against us, to confront us. Don't don't blame others for what Satan is doing. Many people are just ignorant. They don't even have a clue that Satan is influencing them, controlling them, you know, kind of giving them marching orders, you know, to gossip or whatever. Your adversary, the devil. And that's true. And some people say, oh, the devil, oh, that's, that's not a real thing. It, you're just paranoid. Yeah, that's, you're just imaginative. You've just been reading too much. No. But it's true. Satan is real. And he's a real enemy. Well, what's his behavior? What, what, what's he do? What what's he like? As a roaring lion. Yes, as a roaring lion. Not like the little chihuahua. <laughs> Not like that. He's a roaring lion. He's powerful. And he's just walketh about. 
So remember, um, God was talking with Satan. Satan went up to see him, and he's discussing some things with God, and he went back down to earth, and he's wandering around, and he comes back to, to have a conversation with God, and he goes back and wanders around earth, right? And there are some other verses that talk about Satan just wandering around, just doing what? As a roaring lion, seeking, searching for, seeking whom he, Satan, may devour. What, what does devour mean? So sometimes, in English, we use the words, you know, we use words like this, you know, I ate that, it was all gone. There was nothing left. Sometimes it means destroy. Here, it's like that. He wants you. He wants me to be gone. He wants to destroy us. Where's uh, so-and-so? Oh, oh, there's a little problem. He was upset and he decided to quit on God and just give up and just he left his wife um he just he just moved away he just and he's never coming to church again he's just gone gone where's um where's that person that that where, where, where what's that guy doing <coughs> oh yeah you know, uh, last month was sick. He got all upset about it. Now he's angry at God and become bitter, and he just left. He's just gone. He's just not. He's just not here. He's not coming to church. He's not going to work. He's just. He just quit. Quit on everything. Left his wife. Left his family. Just quit on everything. He's just gone. Um, where's, where's that person? You know, wh where, where are they at? Oh, yeah. You know, um, a couple months ago, these two people, this one and this one, they were having, they were talking. And he thought this other guy was gossiping about him, but it's not, it didn't really happen. It wasn't really gossiping, didn't really do it. But... That guy, he just decided just to leave. He says, I, I'm out of here. He's, you know, angry at God because his people and, and his church, and they're just terrible, terrible people here. Just leaving. I'm just quitting. I'm just giving up. He's gone. And that happens. How? Satan just walking around. You know, noticing people's expressions, their body language. He's like, oh, I, I, I know how to upset that guy. These two are having a talk, and I heard him say something, and I heard him say something, and I am going to mess this situation up. I'm going to put it in this guy's head that he's lying, that he's two-faced, that he's hypocrite. And convince him that everybody's talking about him. Everybody's hating you. Everybody's blaming you. Everybody's teasing you. Everybody's picking on him. And what's he going to be? He's just following along. Just, just decides to quit. And that kind of thing happens. And Satan wins devours them, they're gone, destroys them.
another notch in the belt. Question. Do you see, do you notice danger? Do you see something? You see a person, you see their facial expression, maybe um, their body language, they're looking, you know, confrontational or... Or, you know, facial eye rolls or whatever. Do you see that? Have you seen that? Have you noticed it? This is a battle going on inside their hearts. Are you in control of your emotions? Are you being sober or not so much? Are you paying attention? Are you being aware or are you ignorant of what's going on around you? But God commands us. And he's given us the reason. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, please help us to understand every word of every one of your words. And help us to apply your word to our lives. Help us, help our minds to understand clearly. Help our hearts to be soft and willing to receive and believe and trust in you. Please help us to decide that you're right, that your word is right, and we need to follow it. We don't need to argue about it. We need to accept it, that you are right. Please, please give me wisdom. Please protect us. Help me to teach and preach clearly that we may all benefit Work in our hearts, every one of us. If there's one who's not yet saved, I pray you'd work in their hearts. Help them be saved today. Help them understand Satan wants to destroy him. Satan wants to destroy us all, and he wants us all to go to hell with him. Please, work in people's hearts. Help them to become saved today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Some truths we need to talk about here. <clears throat> we have a strong enemy he's, he's not weak he's not stupid he's not lazy this verse says be sober in control be careful be aware be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Seeking. He's hunting you. You know? You know a hunter sneaking up on its prey? You've, have you seen this before? Like a cat, it's, you know, cats are skilled hunters. They crouch down real low. And they're watching, and oh, so quiet, oh, so slow, creeping in. You know, sometimes, you know, my cat, I, honestly, not my cat, my mom's cat. That was hers, not mine. I remember sometimes that that cat sees a bird trying to, trying to, to voice like a bird, make little bird sounds. You know, because he wants to catch that bird. And I thought, well, that's funny that the cat... Did, now, when the cat would catch the bird, what would he do? Eat it? No. he just play with it. Get the bird in its paw and it'd start to struggle. You know? <laughs> but Satan Satan's like a hunter what's he hunting for for play for curiosity 
No, he wants to destroy us. He wants you and I gone. He's not playing. He wants to destroy you and me. We're not alone. In, in verse 9, the next verse, it says, you know, talking to us, it says, Whom resist? Resist. Resist him. Steadfast means faithful, continuing. Not just on occasion, not just once in a while, not like, okay, you know, I'm kind of tired, so I'm just going to take a rest and not, not be involved in this. A week later, a month later, or whatever, say, okay, fine, I'm going to get back in the fight. <coughs> get tired again, say, y'all go on, I'll be right here. No, steadfast, continuous, consistent in the faith. Knowing that the same afflictions. What's that word mean? Hey. Then, um. This word, what's this mean? It means problems, maybe sickness, maybe pain, maybe it means problems. The same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You're not alone. As it is with you, it is with others. Satan's against you, he's against others. Honestly, after death, when we're in heaven, it's going to be wonderful up there. But here on earth, the, the war continues. Sometimes Satan's like, they're all just ignorant. You're the only ones got problems. You're all alone. Everybody else, they're doing just great. They're doing just fine. But you, you're a mess. And these others, they're never going to understand you, never going to understand what you're going through. You just, God's just picking on you. He's, he's just picking on you. Just telling you straight. I'm not lying, just telling you straight. Look, don't they all look fine to you? But you and, and your faithfulness and your going to church and your giving and all that stuff and your serving and look at what happened to you. Just, just look at this. It's because God doesn't like you. He likes all these other people. Yeah, he approves of everything they're doing, but you... Mm. And you're all alone. Nobody understands you. They'll never understand you, these others. I'm, I'm sorry, but, you know, it's just too bad for you. But it's not true. The same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. First, your adversary is strong. Second, you are not alone. And third, God's grace is enough. In the next verse, verse 10, it says, But the God of all grace, 
So please notice, where is grace from? Grace is from God. He is the God of all grace, not some, not a little. We don't get some from, you know, Satan, some from God. All grace is from God who hath called us unto his eternal glory. Here, we got problems, we got struggles, we're in a, we're in a war, we've got burdens, we're tired, it's true. But there with God, eternal glory by Jesus, by Christ Jesus. We will. We will experience that forever. When? After that ye have suffered. A while, a short time, and there will be suffering here on earth, but after that, eternal glory, forever glory, short time suffering. Compare those two things. Here on earth, we do have suffering, but it's for a short time. Suffering, short time, glory forever. Compare those. <coughs> so after you have suffered a while, make you perfect. Establish, strengthen, settle you. Here. On earth, we've got problems, suffering, but it's a short time. And what's it for? What's the purpose of all of that? To make you perfect. Okay, this word perfect, what does perfect mean? It, it, it doesn't mean the way we think of perfect. This is an old English word. This is an old word. Long time ago, this word perfect, it didn't mean like, oh, everything is just exactly right. No, it means mature. It means complete. So I tell the college students here in science class, in biology, we emphasize this word perfect. We talk about it. In biology, in bio biology language, science language, we see a flower, and the, some parts of the flower are perfect, and some parts of the flower are imperfect. So what does that mean? In, in the flower, imperfect means, what does it mean? Perfect means that it has all of its parts. Everything is present. Mm hmm. Organs. Who? Organs. Okay. But imperfect means that it does not have all four of those things. Who? Orients. Orients. And it, so this word perfect is an old word. It, it, it's really referring to this idea of maturity and completeness. So these problems here and these sufferings and these trials that we have, they're for a purpose. They're to make us complete, mature. For example, he wants us to be full of the Holy Spirit. He wants us to be full of fruit of the Spirit. So maybe you remember the fruit of the Spirit has nine parts. It's one fruit with nine parts. And he, and he wants us to be complete with all of the parts. That's one example. This word establish. Settle. It's like having deep roots. Or, you know, problems, trials. 
you know, like, you know, the rain helps our, helps a plant's roots to be deep and established and not blown away with the slightest wind. Like, like tumbleweeds. But to have deep roots. So, you know, when the problems and the winds come, it, it, it does not overwhelm. It's able to resist and stand strong. Strengthen. Strengthen. So that E-N at the end of the word means to give strength, to put strength in it. So we have this word able, and when we add into it, so this word able means, here's able, but you add into it, it means that you give them the ability. Strengthen, when you add the E-N N to the word strength, it means to put in strength. Strengthen. The point of the suffering, of the problems, of the trials, of the burdens, of the fatigue, of the pains, of the sadness. We, we're going to experience those things, but God's grace is sufficient and supports us and strengthens us, helps us to be rooted, settled, perfect, mature, with all of, these, all of the parts that we're supposed to have. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is coming soon. It could be today. That's the next verse, 11. To him, Jesus Christ, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. In verse 4 before this, or chapter 4, chief, Jesus is the chief shepherd. We will receive a crown of glory. And to him, Jesus. He is coming soon. He is coming again. Soon. So what's happening here on earth is a short time. There in heaven, we will experience glory forever. Our suffering here is short. Compare, the two, compare these two. Accept it. Let it help you, grow you, strengthen you, help you be deeply rooted and established. Accept it. Are you willing to accept these things? Do you know that his grace is enough? That his plan is best? Now some of you, are you saved? Are you saved already? God has a plan for you and me to be with him, his son. Understand that these problems are used as a tool to help us to grow. As we wait for his return, we need to be here working, improving, growing, developing, till we become like him in heaven. Through all the burdens and all the sadness and all the things we experience here, these things are, re are necessary to help us to grow. If you're not yet saved, please, please remember, we, we all sin. We all need to accept Jesus Christ for Savior. There's no other way. There's the only way. Church can't do it for you. Baptism isn't going to help you. You'll never, you can't be good enough. You can't pay any money for this. You can't be bought. 
The only thing you can do is trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior. Call on him. Say, Lord, please save me. Please, I'm trusting in you. You and you alone. Jesus is the Son of God. He is God who became person, was born, lived a perfect life, bled and died on the cross and rose three days later to prove he conquered sin, he conquered death, he conquered hell. And so now it's your decision. Are you willing to trust Jesus Christ for salvation? Please don't put that off. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Please help us to remember we're in a war here every day, all day. And we need to be sober. Not just emotional, not wild, not, not angry, not just blowing our top at every little thing. <clears throat> we need to be vigilant, focused, paying attention, aware, aware of what's happening, people to pray for, people to talk to, people to witness to. Notice that this battle is going on around us and we need to be engaged, not acting like it doesn't matter to us. We need to be involved. Please help us to be wise and help us to remember that your grace is enough and we're not alone, we're never alone. We're all subject to the same burdens and sadness. We are not alone. Please remember, help us to remember that what's going on here will be over soon. One day we'll be with you in glory forever. And as it's all quiet here, think about yourself, think about your life, think about this battle that we're in. Do you need to be more careful? Do you need to be more sober? Do you need to be depending on God's grace more? Do you need to grow more? Heavenly Father, please help us. Help us to accept your plan because you know what's best. Please help us to accept these warnings. Our enemy walketh about seeking whom he may devour. This is no imaginary creature. Please help us to be aware. Help us to be willing to share the truth that others might be saved. People here, people watching, if you're not yet saved, I pray, Lord, you'd work in their hearts today. We pray 